and Atlanta got robbed a little bit on their last drive. It, you know, I don't know if anything would have occurred after the horrendous pass interference call against Tulio Jones by Richard Sermon, where he's holding his arm down the whole time, preventing him from putting two hands on the ball to catch it. That wasn't called, which I'm surprised, honestly. That normally is a call that only goes against the Lions. So it's kind of relieving for us to see it go against somebody else because we understand how that is. But they were robbed on that play. And who knows what would have happened. They could have fumbled. They could have thrown an interception the next play. They could have scored and had to kick off with time left and Seattle could have returned it and won. Any number of things could have happened after that. But that call at the end of the game, with time running out, you can't have that. And I've been saying for years, if you're going to have replay, then allow replay of any play. I mean, why limit what you can challenge? If, you, if you're penalized basically for getting it wrong, for getting a, taking a time out away if you stop the game and challenge the referee. Why not allow them to challenge any call on the field? Anything. You're still stopping the game for the same amount of time. You don't give them more challenges if you open up more plays. You still get two per half or, and you lose timeouts. If you get it wrong, let them challenge anything. They would have challenged that play and it would have been overruled. Yes, there's the human element. But the human element, for some reason, seems like it became so much worse as the game became so much faster and so much better. So now take advantage of this aspect of technology and be able to use it to your advantage. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly right there. I mean, you can't get better than Jarius better than Bill and worse than that pass interference call that was not made on Richard Sherman against Julio Jones and you know we were going to debate Julio Jones tonight we got the presidential debates going on right now we were going to have a debate about Julio we're going to start opening more stuff like that up on the show for sure if you listen to the last episode you got the new phone number for the show uh, we'll announce that periodically here and there but not for everybody uh, you got to be a listener and it only works Sundays at 5 30 Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Saturday mornings after 9 that's when we do the show you know we'll pass that number out again on Saturday morning for anybody who's listening some people listening right now got to be Cleveland fans what a year for Cleveland sports huh LeBron James brings home the first championship and five or six decades you got the Cleveland baseball team the Cleveland Indians they won the ALCS today knocking Toronto out in five games very impressive what they did and I remember Cleveland being talked about at the beginning of the season as a potential World Series candidate and now they find themselves as the first team in this year's World Series the Dodgers are currently up on the Cubs two games to one they play tonight Cubs are going to have to get their bats going. They've been shut out twice so far in the National League Championship Series. And this is a team that I definitely thought, and a lot of people thought, really had a chance this year. Joe Madden's going to have to get on his uh, managerial high horse and get them focused again and get this team right. All right, after the break, we'll preview this week's NFL games, and then I'll tell you why Matthew Stafford is the best quarterback in the NFL. Hey guys, the NFL is back. It's time to win some cash playing fantasy football. The DirtCannon.com is a local company that has your back. They have produced over 60% winners on FanDuel, DraftKings, and now even Yahoo. The DirtCannon.com will help you build, play, and win. Build a better team with the DirtCannon.com. Use promo code RDST and get $5 off forever and try the silver membership this week for free. Visit thedirtcannon.com. All 
right, let's get into this week's NFL games. Week 7 in the NFL season. We are almost halfway through. You know, we're getting close. It's 16 games. We're seven weeks in. We're getting there. Uh, This week's games, we got Washington and Detroit. You know, let's do it. Let's, Let's go win another one, Detroit. This is a winnable game. Yes, Washington's playing pretty good right now, but this is a winnable game by the Lions. So we will have to see how it plays out. I will take the Lions in this game. I think both teams will be 4-3 and three after this game, and I'm going to continue to ride Stafford to the end. Thursday night, kicking off the week, we have the Bears at the Packers. I expect to see Aaron Rodgers kind of shut up his critics in this game. I feel bad for the Bears, honestly. Um, not a good time for them to be running in to this situation. The Giants will play at L.A. against the Rams this week. We'll have to see if... Uh, Odell goes a little too Hollywood this week or if he can keep himself under control and let his game do the talking for him. Like I mentioned earlier, Jarius will be taking his New Orleans Saints to Kansas City to play the Chiefs this week. The Colts are at Tennessee in the division matchup. I'll take Tennessee in this game as the Colts really haven't been playing all that consistent or well this season. You got the Minnesota at Philly. This is an interesting matchup. Uh, Philly played real well at the beginning of the season. They've kind of stumbled here over the last couple games. And Minnesota's had some time off to prepare for the Eagles. So can Sam Bradford keep that offense rolling and maybe, you know, create an identity this week? We'll have to see. Battle of Ohio is the Browns are at Cincinnati. The Raiders will take on Jacksonville this week. So maybe the Raiders can right their ship a little bit, give their fans something to talk about. Let's see if the Bills and Dolphins, who both had big wins for themselves last weekend, we'll see how their game turns out as Buffalo travels to South Florida. Baltimore takes on the reeling Jets with Geno Smith getting the start this week as that broke today. Tampa Bay is at San Francisco. Expect Tampa Bay to get back on the right side of things there as San Francisco just doesn't have a lot going for them. San Diego at Atlanta. Uh, You know, I like San Diego. This would be my upset pick of the week as the Falcons are riding pretty high right now. Um, But I I believe in Phillip Rivers and the way the Chargers just continue to do what they have to do. Uh, Patriots and Steelers, this to me is the game of the week. Uh, Even with Big Ben out, just with all the players that are on this field, Big Ben is a knock as he's not there. But uh, it, it's still the Patriots. It's still the Steelers. So we'll see if Tom Brady can, what he can do Sunday afternoon with that. Sunday night football, you got Seattle and Arizona in what is a big early season divisional matchup for those two teams. Uh, it'd be nice to see Arizona uh, hand it to them a little bit, honestly. I, I, I predict them to do a little better than they have, so that would help me out in my predictions. But I, I expect Seattle to definitely go down there to the University of Phoenix Stadium and make that a very good game and quite possibly pull that victory out Sunday night. And then Monday night football, Brock Osweiler coming back to town as the quarterback of the Houston Texans, I almost said Oilers, to play the Denver Broncos and that defense that knows him all so well. And we've heard the comments this week. We've heard them say they want to kill him. They want to get back at him. And, you know, I don't blame him. He didn't just go get that money and do what every player has the right to do. He didn't just get what was best for him, what was the best offer. He shunned the team by not showing up to the ring ceremony. He didn't answer phone calls. He got hurt feelings about it. And he didn't go on the White House trip. He said Houston was a better situation. You don't think that hurts some feelings? You don't think defensive guys who are trained to come after quarterbacks are now going, we know you. Sure, you're playing in a different offense. It's spread. you got different players. But we know you. We know what you're good at. We know what rattles you. We've coached you. Our coaches have coached you. It's going to be a fun game. I do expect Denver to win this game. I don't expect them to lose three in a row. I expect Brock Osweiler to have another game with at least one interception. He might throw 200 yards. 
but he's going to turn the ball over. I expect Denver's defense to probably score a touchdown. I expect there to be some strip sacks. And it's going to be a fun one for sure. For sure. All right, let's get real real quick, okay? Matthew Stafford. If you guys haven't heard it, Peter Schrager, all right, has come out this week and said Matthew Stafford is one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the NFL right now. Now, just a few short weeks ago at the beginning of this season, I talked about Matthew Stafford. I talked about how the pundits out there and the people at the mothership and everybody want to put him down, how even local guys here on the fan want to talk about Detroit as a bad situation and Matthew Stafford as not being that good of a quarterback. But the proof is in the tape. He can throw it from every angle. He has touch. He has the arm. He can throw it deep. And it wasn't just that he was throwing to Calvin. We've had some bad offenses in Detroit, if you guys haven't noticed. We've had some two good players over that time, Stafford and Calvin. Calvin's gone now. He's doing his thing on Dancing with the Stars. He did an amazing dance this week. Uh, if you're not watching what he's doing, check it out. It's pretty impressive. Uh, but Stafford is amazing. We talked about he was the only quarterback in NFL history to throw over a complete season, 16-game schedule, have a completion percentage of over 60%. First one ever. Nobody else is on that list. Him. He owns almost every Detroit Lions passing record. He's carrying that team right now. Abdullah's out. Riddick's out. Offensive line is in shambles. Ansa hasn't been playing. Levy's been out. Linebackers galore. Not there for Detroit. Tate was missing until last week. And he keeps rolling. He keeps putting up yards. Since Jim Bob Cooter took over halfway through last season and we got rid of Lombardi, who was trying to be Sean Payton, Stafford's thrown something like six interceptions and 28 touchdowns. And if you've watched his play this year, it's been amazing. He's been on point. He's been consistent. The touch has been there. He's playing this season how Aaron Rodgers has been playing the last few seasons. No safety blanket anymore. No top, top guy that everybody's scared of. They're not doubling and throwing guys over the top on Tate and Jones. Every now and then when the defense calls for it, sure. But it's not every play. You don't see the punt formation corners at the goal line that Calvin would get. It's a different offense. The offensive coordinator is also calling plays differently because of that. And sure, Jim Bob came in. We still had Calvin last season. But you saw that it wasn't a Calvin-centered offense after he came in. It was open guy gets the ball. First open guy I read, that's where I'm going with it. Just like you, when you're playing for fun. That's what I love about how those two click together. Yes, Stafford is a legitimate MVP candidate. And I've said it on the show before. I don't think the MVP should go to the guy, best player on the best team. Because if you won four games and it was on the back of a guy who put up a ton of individual point stats, and it was only because of him that you were competitive at all, like a Philip Rivers, like a Matthew Stafford, then yes, he is a candidate. And the way Stafford is playing right now, compared to the other players in the league, the Matt Ryans who have put up great fantasy numbers this year, the Drew Breeses who are putting up great fantasy numbers, Brady who's coming back, he is right there with all of them. And if not more so, because of the team and the injuries and the things that they're dealing with there in Detroit. And because he's got everybody's weight in the country telling him he's not good enough. And he's not one of those guys. CJ, here on the local, the fan, puts him as a Tier 3 or Tier 4 quarterback. Are you kidding me? Man, be quiet with that noise. You didn't even go to the NFL, and you could have. People wanted you when you came out of CU, and you chose to do something else. Respect to that. You made your own choice. 